Stop bursting crackers, don't pollute the air, don't scare the animals. These are some very common lines that we get to hear on and around Diwali every single year. Many celebrities like Alia Bhatt, Priyanka Chopra and Amir Khan have spoken against bursting crackers for various reasons like protecting animals and environment. But if we see their personal life, it's quite contradictory. Let me make it clear, my intention is not to defame them. The three I mentioned above are my absolute favourite actors. But it's an inevitable fact that we common people are getting highly influenced by celebrities. Even I stopped bursting crackers eight years back thinking not to add to the pollution but if you see the statistics and studies it tells you a whole different story from 2013 to 2021 59.1 percent of the world's increase in pollution has come from india the government has regulated many schemes but most of the hype about air pollution is only on diwali every year why on 7th november 2023 just five days before diwali a new scheme that the supreme court has imposed a complete ban on fire crackers all over India. But it all started five years back. In October 2018, due to the rise in pollution, the Supreme Court ordered to impose a complete ban on firecrackers on Diwali. But it further said only less polluting green crackers can be sold. Again in 2021, ahead of Diwali reaffirming the ban, the Supreme Court passed orders to ensure that the banned chemicals are not used in the firecrackers. The bench had also clarified that there is no total ban on firecrackers and only those crackers which use the banned chemicals are being banned. But what is that banned chemical? It is barium salt that they are talking about. But why use barium? The green flame produced in the fireworks is due to the presence of barium. It is toxic and can lead to hyperkalemia, a disease that can cause an abnormal heart rhythm. I genuinely appreciate the concern about people's health. But my question is if we are really concerned about the health of our citizens, why haven't we yet banned the tobacco and cigarettes which is killing more than 1 lakh people? People every single year in India, which is an all-time high record. If the concern is really about health, shouldn't we first ban the substance that is being used by the people on a daily basis instead of banning the crackers that is being burnt only once a year? In September 2023, an application was filed by Tan Pharma, a firecracker manufacturing association, to include barium salt with improved formulation in the green crackers. It claimed that with the new formulation, the emission of barium salt would be reduced to 30% and this plea was rejected by the Supreme Court. Why was the application rejected when it did reduce the emission of that harmful chemical? So health is not an issue. Is it pollution then? I think that could be a discussion. Do you have any idea that more than 2.1 million children in Delhi have irreversible lung damage due to the poor quality of air? The air pollution in Delhi has reached its extreme which is 15.2 times above the recommended limit given by the WHO guidelines. Eight of the top 10 cities with the worst air pollution today are in India. But Diwali time has not even started yet. According to reports, the pollution average in the northern capital region is more than the average cities of southern India. And India's top 10 most polluted cities are from North India. Why so? What is the actual reason for most of the pollution in the north part? Do firecrackers really cause that much pollution? But Diwali is being celebrated all over India not just in North India, right? Our South Indians not celebrating Diwali that much. As someone who lives in the southernmost part of India, I can confirm that Diwali is one of our major festivals. So what causes more pollution in the North? While the court and government are very easily discouraging the celebration of Diwali, the most astonishing thing is that most of the pollution are not even coming from firecrackers. There's something called stubble burning, which is a process of setting on fire the leftover crops that remind after harvesting grinds like wheat and rice. And this double burning that usually clashes with the Diwali season is the main reason for pollution brought to northern India, while dust and vehicles account for most pollution caused in southern India. But the government is very quick to blame it on Diwali and make us find alternatives for celebrating our own festival. For example, New Delhi, the capital, is one of the world's most polluted cities. It suffers from air pollution throughout the year. But toxic air levels rise during the winter when wind push the smoke from farms in Punjab, Haryana and UP into the city and hide it under a blanket of fog. In 2021, the government told Supreme Court that farm fires accounted for an average of 10% of the city's air pollution. But government monitoring agencies say the effect of stubble burning may account for up to 45% of Delhi's pollution at its worst. Under the Indian Penal Code, Section 188 makes stubble burning a crime. It was 
was banned by an environmental court in 2015. Recently, on the evening of 3rd November, the Bangladesh team cancelled its training session in the Arun Jaitley Stadium of Delhi because of poor air quality, and it's indeed an insult to our country. And there are warnings given that the pollution levels could worsen in the Delhi NCR in the upcoming days, and Diwali has not even started yet. It's found recently that one of the two 23 crore worth smoke towers in Delhi, which are like huge air purifiers, is ineffective and not at all working. The fact that the national capital and its surrounding areas are experiencing hazardous air quality levels makes us question the government. It's strange that the government can provide free electricity and water to the poor people, but cannot check up the working condition of a smoke tower. In 2021, the Delhi government imposed a complete ban on storage, sale, and use of firecrackers during Diwali because of the rising pollution levels. However, the pollution remained the same. So banning firecrackers didn't really help in reducing the pollution. According to the Delhi Pollution Breakup, transport causes 17.9% of pollution and biomass burning is leading with a 26.3% contribution in causing pollution. Residential is calling 3.8%, industries 3.5%, construction 2.6% and door dust 1.3% of the pollution in Delhi as of 2023. Please remember the burning of crackers is not even in the list of top 10 reasons. Looking at the hazardous air quality, the Supreme Court on 7th November ordered an immediate ban on stubble burning. The court asked the Delhi government to ensure the municipal solid waste is not burnt openly in the city as it happens usually. It also asked the government to repair that smoke tower. But what has the government done to prevent this from further damage? The odd even scheme is set to be imposed from 13th to 20th November. But what is odd even scheme? It's a scheme that Delhi follows to keep the pollution in control. By this scheme, the vehicles with license plate numbers ending in even numbers like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 are allowed to operate on even dates while those ending with odd numbers like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 are allowed to operate on odd days. While this odd even scheme might reduce the emission, the amount of pollution reduced is so minimal that it's almost close to nothing. Since the air pollution reached a severe level now, a ban on non-essential construction work has been imposed and all the schools and most of the colleges have been closed in Delhi. But what about the precautions that they had to take before this all happened? All of them are being proven ineffective. And after failing to address the core issues that have led to the pollution in Delhi, we are blaming it on Diwali right now which is happening only once a year. Burning of firecrackers is not even in the top 10 reasons for pollution in Delhi, let alone the whole country. Vehicles are the top cause for air pollution in India. Dangerous factories and unauthorized building materials has taken the second place. But why have strict actions not been taken regarding the top causes? The Ministry of Environment has released the data including the list of red category of industries causing pollution. Firecrackers did not even make it to the top 10 of the list and yet so much effort is put on banning them. Wouldn't it be better if we can actually focus more on the top 10 or even top 13 extremely hazardous reasons? The firecrackers might be an addition to the existing cause but surely it isn't one of the main reasons for pollution. And we wish to prize the western world all the time. We should also look at the celebrations made in the world for their festival. With the explosion of over 5 lakh fireworks under 6 minutes, Dubai has a Guinness world record for the world's biggest fireworks display. In Houston River of United States, a firework display lasts for 26 minutes with over 75,000 shells set off every year on 4th July. And we should remember this is not the number of firecrackers that an individual burns. This is just the number of firecrackers that the government is sponsoring for one state. These countries are some of the most developed countries and they do not discourage the bursting of crackers. Instead, they promote and fund the show as a sign of encouraging the people to keep up with their culture. What are we doing? And finally, about scaring the animals by bursting crackers. More than 10 million animals are being sacrificed every year during Eid. And I don't find even a single prominent figure 
speaking against it. 46 million turkeys are killed every year for Thanksgiving alone in the US. Over 126 million trees are cut down every year across the world leading to large-scale deforestation and CO2 release. With so much injustice going on against animals and environment, why there is a bias only against Diwali? What happens to all the activists then? And it's not what about Assam. You being highly vocal about one festival and being completely silent about others makes you an hypocrite and makes me question your intentions. And why is nobody discussing Sivakasi? It's a city in Tamil Nadu known for its firecrackers and matchbox factories that produce 70% of our nation's produce for which it's called the Little Japan. Most of its people are employed in the firecrackers industry. There are 1,070 registered companies in the city employing more than 3 lakh people on a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine how many employment opportunities are taken and these are just from the manufacturing division. Distributors of firecrackers across India have to close their shop every year because of the ban. The sale of firecrackers has decreased abundantly. In 2020, 3,000 crores worth firecrackers were manufactured while in 2021, the protection has reduced by half. And people say working in firecracker factories cause fire accidents leading to loss of lives. For that, the government has to focus on precautions and safety methods, not on imposing a complete ban which is going to make them lose their livelihood. Finally, yes, bursting crackers do affect the environment and scare the animals, but the damage is not as much as people are propagating it to be. Instead of focusing on the root causes that add to the pollution on a day-to-day -day basis, we are busy blaming it on a festival that happened only once a year. As a 26-year-old woman, I stopped bursting crackers eight years back on the day of Diwali I just go out and burst one or two crackers as a symbol of paying respect to the traditions to be honest crackers doesn't excite me anymore but as a child I used to count days for Diwali to come every day I used to go to bed thinking like three more days to go two more days to go to burst that crackers don't take away that happiness from your children act like an adult and try to fix the pollution you're causing on a day-to-day -day basis so that your children can enjoy bursting crackers once a year. Happy Diwali!